Hey, welcome to another few minutes with Beep. Uh, this time we're going to take a look at wave shaping and uh, wave clipping and wave manipulation. It's something that especially West Coast style synthesis people are really into. Um, in this one though, we're going to actually use wave shaping in conjunction with another kind of module that I think is really important when we're looking at wave shapes. And that's the scope modules. In this case, I'm going to go to the scope category and pull in big scope. I happen to find this really useful for, uh, for me because it's kind of big, so it's easy to see, but also it has some mechanisms for locking the edge detection that are really useful. So in this case, I have a standard analog style oscillator. If I turn my DSP on, I can hear it. And then if I take my signal and just route it to the big scope, you'll see that it kind of uh, does this unsynchronized display. Now, I'll lock the patch. If I set the locking to smart, it attempts to track the incoming frequency and do some adjustments, but I find that it gets confused as often as not. So instead, what I like doing is driving the scope with the same one volt per octave signal that I'm using for the keyboard. What that does is it kind of informs the scope about what's going on and as a result it has a little better clue of what it should use for locking. Now I change it to one volt per octave and it in fact locks in pretty tightly and this is great because now we'll be able to see what's going on with our waveforms. Um, so I'm going to unlock here, go to the beep wave shapers section. And I'm going to start off first of all with the Wave Shaper module. This is a pretty simple module, but I'm going to first of all show you a patching trick. If you hold down the Option key on a Mac and uh, select a bunch of patch cords, they all get selected. Now get the single little handle, grab that handle and use it to move all of the patch cords together. It's a pretty handy way of doing some quick alternate patching. Now I'm going to plug in the signal from the oscillator into the Wave Shaper, lock my patch, and play around with the Wave Shaper's amount. You'll see what it does is it takes my starting sine wave and basically slowly morphs it into a square wave. You know, a square wave with rounded edges, but it's a nice sounding bright square wave. In essence, you can think of a Wave Shaper as a reverse filter. What it does is it adds harmonics, basically, by moving things towards being a rectangle or a square wave. Now this works not only with sine waves, but also with things like triangle waves, sawtooth waves, and even kind of irregularly or analog shaped square waves. It's especially effective if you have some pulse width modulation. If I make kind of a skinny waveform now, this basically squares the skinny waveform and it also amplifies it in the process. So, in this case, I'm going to go back to my sine wave because it happens to be the plainest of the waveforms, and now my wave shaper, you know, it gets the added harmonics that come with the squaring of the wave. And I can take any kind of modulator thing. So let's just grab a simple LFO, drop this in, take the uh, take the triangle wave output of this, put it in the CV, and then when I turn up the CV amount, I get a constantly changing wave shape. So that's the Wave Shaper, and it's a really great way to add harmonic content to otherwise simple waveforms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at another Wave Shaper. This one has the very simple name of Folder. And what it is, is it's sort of a multi-dimensional wave folder and wave warper. I like this uh, tool a lot because it gives us some really interesting options for manipulation. So first of all, let's take a look at the controls. It has high and low 
controls along with CV modulation. If we take a look at what turning up the low value does, what it basically takes is the lower half of the waveform and it basically folds it upwards. Now the reason it folds it is because of the setting of this little drop down menu. You'll see if I change it from fold to wrap, now when I turn up the low, what it does is it wraps it over the top instead of folding it from the bottom. And finally the clip basically does a squaring off, but it does it by literally chopping the waveform at some position. Three very unique and very different ways of manipulating the waveform. Now likewise, the high control does the exact same thing based on the setting of the fold warp or fold wrap or clip setting. So in this case, if I set it to fold the high end, it folds it down over itself. If I choose the wrap, the wrap wraps it up from the bottom. And finally, the clip again will take and clip things starting at the top. Now, one of the things that's really important about this is that not only do you have this low and high separately addressable, but uh, they also have individual CV control. So if I take two different LFOs, I'll take just a standard LFO, and then I'll option drag to make a duplicate. So now I have two of them, but what I'm gonna do is set them to slightly different speeds. So one kind of slower at roughly uh, one quarter hertz, and another one a little faster at just under two hertz. Now I'm gonna take these triangle waves, move them to the low and the high CV inputs, respectively, and start turning up their CV amounts. You can see now I get this kind of very interesting waveform manipulation. Now that's in clip mode, which is probably simple. Let's go to something like fold mode. Very unusual manipulation. And again, by having different LFO rates, I get very interesting wave shapes. So there are just two of the wave folding systems. There's a couple of others uh, that you might want to explore, but those two are the ones that really I find the most interesting. You combine these kind of wave folded signals with either something like a low pass gate or some interesting filtering, you can end up really extending the palette of sounds that you can create with an analog type system. So I hope you found that interesting. And again, uh, with the scope, make sure that you get in there and play around with some of the scope options. Uh, once you're comfortable using the big scope, you can always flip to something that's maybe a little more space efficient. Um, one of those that works out really great is the thing that's just plain called scope, just kind of a tiny version. Um, there's some other cool ones. Uh, there's a scope they're called the GL scope, which actually uses uh, OpenGL to do its business and you kind of get a different and interesting display. But in any case, all of these different scopes might give you different views on the work you're doing. And if you're interested in the harmonic content of your sound, you can use one of the spectral dis displays to actually give you a sense of what the spectral content of your sound is like. You can see here that with the oddball wave folding that we get some very, very interesting sorts of uh, source of sonic material. So I hope that you find that interesting. I hope that it opens up some doors for you. And as always, have a blast. Catch you soon. Bye.